If you're new here, welcome. My name is Carlin. If you are returning and following along with my tongue tie journey, then thank you. I sincerely appreciate your support as well as your curiosity in my own journey. So in today's video, I want to make a really succinct list of all of the symptoms that I've had throughout my life. If you are interested in understanding how I connected these dots, these puzzle pieces together, go and check out my other video, how I discovered I have a tongue tie. It is a lot longer, it's more in depth, and I just share my story and my journey of realizing that there is an underlying root to these experiences that I'm having. I share very openly from my heart, I get a bit vulnerable and share how my relationship with chronic pain as well as one of my deepest insecurities, together those fueled my deep inquiry and, and deep desire to investigate, to understand myself in a better way. So definitely check that video out. I have now been officially diagnosed as having a tongue tie. I have created another video where I'm fresh out of the practice and just captured the excitement and the the realizations. I just wanted I wanted to expand off of that. You know, now that I have this knowledge, awareness, confirmation that yes, I do have a tongue tie, I want to track and take stock of what is currently here, what is present. Yeah, stick my tongue out at you. <laughs> but also it'll be really great to look back at this video after my release, whether immediately after or months or years later, just to see how much has changed. And so this is what I mean by documenting and tracking my entire journey. So let's talk about my symptoms. My symptoms started to present uh, at the beginning of my life when I was born. Um, I did have birth complications, but I was having difficulty latching on and breastfeeding. Now that is one of the most classic cases of having tongue tie issues as an infant and it's usually picked up in that moment when babies aren't able to latch onto the mother's breast. So um, the next symptom that presented was extreme sleep apnea by the time I was four years old, snoring like crazy. In my other video I share some funny uh, stories about that. I also had my tonsils and adenoids removed when I was six years old. That was because of the sleep apnea and not being able to sleep very well. Next, I was also experiencing a lot of um, teeth and jaw issues by the time that I was 10. All my front teeth, top and bottom, were crooked and I had a high palate, small jaw that was crowding and so I was uh, put on orthodontic treatment to have the palate expander expand my teeth out. I had that for a year and then I went and had braces for four years. After the orthodontics for five years, um, I still had crossbite, I still had overbite and we were told the only way to fix that would be to get reconstructive jaw surgery. So. I didn't go ahead with that, but it has been on the back of my mind uh, since and it's what kind of fueled my journey to understanding what's going on in here. But very soon after, I started to have a relapse in my mouth. My two front teeth uh, have, um, they're no longer straight, I have one coming out in front of the other. I'm told that that is because my tongue is not in the uh, correct position, it's not at the roof of my mouth and your tongue is the natural palate expander that kind of holds your teeth in place so your cheeks don't just squish it all in. I have noticed when I look up in the mirror and also when I had photos taken um, that there was a bit of a concave in my front teeth, top and bottom. So. Just the fact that there is a relapse like that is also a symptom. When I started going through the orthodontic treatment, that is when I started to experience pain in my body, in my back, my shoulder, my lower back. It was kind of all over the place. I also have experienced throughout my life extreme tightness in my body. 
So I shared a little bit about that in my other video, but something that I didn't mention that I'll mention here is even though I went and did my yoga teacher training and even though I have been doing uh, circus classes, aerial classes, flexibility classes for over two years, I still experience extreme tightness in my body. And what happens for me is even when I'm doing my practices, my yoga or my strength and mobility training with the circus, if I miss a day, if I miss two days, if I miss a week, I am back to what feels like square one. My body just contracts in a way that it feels like my body is made of cement <laughs> sometimes, especially in my legs, of my thighs, my hamstrings, behind my knees and my calves. They are so full of tension and as well as this area of my body here is constantly tight because my shoulders are quite rounded. I'm probably in the best position that I've been health, fitness, flexibility wise um, in my whole life because of my extended attentiveness, care, willingness to show up. But that being said, there is still so much tension in my body. So it does feel pretty frustrating at times to put so much work into my body and then for it to still feel so constricted, so tight and I have a deeper understanding now that that is where you know the pain is coming from because I've learned that with the tongue tie it's not just aff affecting your mouth and jaw area your tongue is actually attached to the fascia which is connected all the way throughout your body so it is it is so connected it is such a whole body experience and it's Incredible to think that this tiny little webbing could be <laughs> affecting me in such a severe way. It's freaking mind-blowing. Oh, another place that I experience tightness is in my side body. It often feels like cement and I'm still working out how to stretch it out. I am a passionate hula hooper, uh, which has definitely helped with my strength and body awareness in this area but in terms of flexibility it is an area of my body that um, does need more love and attention <laughs> oh and another thing that i learned is a symptom or a sign that there is something going on perhaps with your tongue is i and look i didn't realize that this wasn't <laughs> like what other people did but I've always had a very difficult time swallowing pills or tablets or vitamins. Anything like that really activates my gag reflex. If I want to swallow one, my process of doing that is to actually put water in my mouth first, tilt it back, and then drop the pills into my mouth so I can swallow that way. Otherwise, I choke on them or gag. And that has been a thing since I was a kid. So I didn't know that that was connected, but it is. And I've heard that other people have said the same thing, which is so random and so funny. So I just thought I would share that with you because if you're having that experience, it might be related. I also was a very shallow breather. I was breathing in and out of my mouth uh, for most of my life. When I had my tonsils and adenoids removed, I had to learn how to breathe again because that really changed everything. Um, but as a teenager, I was a mouth breather and out until my young adult life, until I got into meditation and yoga, which really started to bring more awareness into this part of my body. Another symptom that has also been affecting me is I am always waking up through the night. I am quite active in my dream state, so it definitely has an effect on that, but I'm waking up at least two to six times on average per night. It's because I need to reposition my body, readjust my neck or put, put pillows under my knees because of the pain that it causes in my back if I just sleep straight. I just felt to include that because I think it really is related, just like the chronic pain, the poor sleep, 
does affect. I'm probably in a much better position now, just like with my strength and flexibility, but it's definitely not in the most optimal uh, position that I could be in, so. Just a few other symptoms that I'm experiencing are uh, not having really great tongue mobility, not being able to bring my tongue to the back teeth in my mouth or stick my tongue out very far. Another symptom that I have is um, having a recessed chin. I don't have a very distinct jawline. Um, that's something that I go much more in depth into my other video just because it has made me feel really self-conscious over the years. But for the purpose of this video and for healing through these insecurities, I'm going to show you my profile, show you what I look like from the side. Um, but now I want to show you the nitty gritty and to have something as a base to understand where I'm at. So I am uh, at the beginning stages of my orofacial myology appointments, um, what I like to refer to as my tongue aerobics. I've kicked off the first week and so far it's going really well and I, and I will do another video to explain all the exercises that I'm doing and maybe even to track how I'm going. But for now I want to show you more of my mouth, more of my posture, more of just how my body is working and basically compensating. So this is my tongue from the front position. That is as far as I can go. <laughs> Next, I will show you my side profile. This is me standing in a correct straight position. I'm normally like this. Um, it feels a lot more comfortable for me. And um, yeah, <laughs> doesn't feel as tight. But in doing my exercises, getting my body work treatments and loosening up my body, this is becoming a possibility for me. Um, but yeah, this is, this is what I'm working with. <laughs> And this is my tongue from the side. And I wonder if you can see how much tension is happening here in my neck when I'm doing this. Whew. That is really hard to do. <laughs> I can feel my freedom just like holding on, holding me back. <laughs> I also would really like to show you me sticking my tongue up. <laughs> wow. Ah. And from the side. Next, I'll do a few close-ups. Oh, hey. <laughs> and here is a close-up of me bringing my tongue up towards the roof of my mouth. That is one of the tests that they do in the assessment, um, just to see how tied that your tongue is. So, I do know now that I am a category three, possibly a category four, category four being the most severe th tongue tie that you can have. I'm not quite in that category based on some mobility that I actually do have, uh, but the tie is quite severe. So when I try to bring my tongue up, this is, What happens? My jaw follows along. <laughs> They're best buddies. <laughs> uh, and now I'll show you the suction. If you're new to looking at tongue things, this is kind of weird, <laughs> but after being in the Facebook community group, you kind of get used to looking at other people's tongues and some pretty gnarly photos of people having their tongue released. 
I'm usually pretty squeamish with this kind of stuff, but I figure, you know, I'm gonna have to be looking in the mirror at some point when I get my tongue released, so may as well get used to it. <laughs> oh, and just for fun, I, I am able to do this. <laughs> I wonder if I'll be able to do that after my release. So I'm just putting that in there to document <laughs> if that stays or is affected. So just so you can get an idea of what my neck looks like when I'm doing those tongue exercises from further back, this is, this is me doing my tongue to the roof of my mouth. She died. So these, these are the compensations. My whole body is trying to make sure that I survive, that I live. So basic things like swallowing or holding my body in an upright position is being affected. And I'm not operating the most optimal way that I could be. It's so hard to imagine what life could be like because it's not something that I've experienced. This is something that has been affecting me from even before I was born, in the womb. It's a fascinating journey to be exploring. So I also just want to talk about something that I'm not really seeing come up a lot in the sharing community, but I personally think that it is related. And that is just having anxiety. I have been an anxious person and I can honestly say this my entire life. It's true. I have experienced anxiety from a very, very young age and through my own healing with various counselors, modalities, uh, very deep shadow work and all sorts of things there are plenty of things that, that help paint this picture for me uh, and understanding why I experience anxiety. But since discovering this tongue tie and understanding the effect that having so many compensations in my body and, this, and these constrictions, as well as the idea of not being able to fully express myself from, from the beginning, not being able to cry fully as a baby or being able to fully expand outwards. There is a lot of somatic patterning that has happened throughout my life that has prevented me from fully coming out of my shell. I've also been looking into the effect that chronic pain has had on people in recording my last video and sharing my experience of having chronic pain for over 10 years. When I looked up the meaning again, it, there were plenty of articles talking about how chronic pain can affect you in multiple ways, including causing feelings of anxiety and depression. And that is something that I have managed, lived, suffered, thrived through my entire life, anxiety and depression have been definitely symptoms of multiple avenues in my life, but definitely I'm starting to realize the connection here with my tongue. It's mind blowing. Something I will definitely be tracking as I go through this journey is this reconfiguration of my body. What's perfect about this is I'm actually just beginning this two-year personal journey and certification program of somatic psychotherapy along with many other amazing components but what's incredible about this is I will be exploring myself and then subsequently being able to support others in this somatic repatterning of my body and understanding just where in my body I'm storing emotions. It just feels like the absolute perfect timing to be going through this experience of releasing my tongue. I can't help but feel that it, it is a, like a whole new version of me waiting on the other side of this. And 
You can say it's dramatic, you can say it's over the top, but I wouldn't have it any other way. This is just who I am and even in everything that I'm sharing, I'm sharing because I want to share from an authentic place and this is exactly how I am experiencing it. And for anybody else out there who may resonate with this, then I'm so glad that we have found each other. It's really exciting to be in this position and, and to be able to share in, in real time all the things, all the changes that I'm going through. So I'm obviously very excited and very nervous, but it is going to be an incredible journey. <laughs> I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here with me. It makes me feel less alone, makes me feel connected, supported, and also makes me feel really validated and seen because it's been a long process, it's been a long journey to discover this part of me and I am definitely an advocate for you know, embracing who you are and not needing to make any drastic changes, but to me this feels like something that is supporting me, that this will really enable deep transformation and change in my life. So to be going on this journey and, and to be able to share it with others again is just so important, so spectacular that we have this technology to be able to share these resources and understanding. So. Thank you again for being here and I really look forward to the next <laughs> few videos, months, weeks, <laughs> years ahead. <laughs> so thank you and I will see you next time.